Matty Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today on an old 25 plus year old Windsor off-grid lithium setup. Really cool. So this one here has a pop top. Now for you guys that have pop tops, we all know how heavy they can be. So old mates replace the gas struts of this one, so it's a little bit easier. That's not why I'm here though. You know, I've done a massive electrical fit out of this one with the, uh, the old Riley here. So a full lithium off-grid package to run the air conditioner, to run the microwave, induction cooktops, toasty makers, bread machines, induction cookers, the list goes on. Anything you want, mains powered, bring it with you. That's what you can do in this. We've also changed the old three-way fridge out on this one. So we've put the Engel compressor fridge in here. So it's always running on 12 volt. Old mate's got that much power in here. He'll leave this on indefinitely like no changing over from gas to 240 to, to it's always 12 volt all right it is always on the same temperature day in day out anyway 560 amp hours of power pool lithium batteries so custom made handmade batteries once again thanks paul 560 amp hours of lithium we've gone for the orion dc to dc charger here 30 amp model all fed from the anderson plug on the vehicle which we have upgraded to allow for the current so 30 amp DC charger. We've also put 50 amp solar controller on this one, a single solar controller. There is no vents on this roof, guys. It is a dead flat roof. There's no antennas, there's nothing. Now, being pop top, we, weight is in mind, all right? You don't want to put panels up there that don't have the gas struts to be able to lift it. Even if you update the gas struts, it can still be quite heavy. So we've gone for the thin film panels from Solar for RVs. They've done a great job of supplying me with some really high quality five year warranty thin film panels that we mount on core flute. So we get an air gap under them. So there's, uh, the efficiency is there on the panels and they guarantee them. So we've put 930 watts on the roof of this, 930, that's crazy. This is only a little pop top Windsor guys. Like it's not a big van. But there's 930 watts on the roof of this, a thin film solar. So really, really cool. Now these panels um, sit at about a 40 volt um, 
an open circuit on each panel. So we've actually gone for a parallel system. So each panel is tied in parallel for this, keeping it at 40 volts. And the cable run runs all the way to the back, all the way down and forward. So it's quite a large cable run. So we've opted for the heavy cable right up to the terminal junction box on the roof. And then from there, we've gone your standard solar cable to each panel. So it's a, um, it's a parallel. So three in parallel guys at 40 volts on this one, all fed into a 50 amp Victron smart solar controller. Now we've also gone for the touch 50 and the servo, turbo on this. So he's on the VRM portal. What that means is this here is remotely monitored from anywhere in the world. I can program it, I can play with the settings for the customer if need be, and he can view it anyway. It'll data log everything. So I'll opt for that as well as the Multi Plus running on all your factory outlets, guys. So it's the Multi Plus 12 3002 on this. Um, the reason we went for the Multi 2 on this is because it is upwards mounted, not sort of flat mounted, and we were very limited with depth. So we've had to go the Multi 2 on this, which is great. Really love the situation with this. So I'll show you guys a video in a second of, you know, what I always do, running air conditioners and stuff uh, all at the same time and give you guys an idea of what things can do with this setup. So I've done all the running on this now. And this one, interestingly enough, has the older Air Command air conditioner that is pretty much on a lot of the older vans sort of in the mid 90s, early 2000s. Um, Jayco run these air conditioners on pretty much all of their caravans, your expanders, um, even some of your old, um, you know, freedoms. This is the Heron 2.2 guys, all right? Now it's not an inverter style air conditioner, so there's no, soft ramping up and soft ramping down. It's clunk on, clunk off, all right? And it's under my seat. It's like a split system. The, the main unit is under the seat and then your fan core's up there. Now, I've always been interested in to see what these actually run off grid, you know, 12 volts from an inverter. It only goes to about 750 watts. So, I mean, geez, I've got it set for, there's no numbers on these things, it's just a knob. I've got it set for max cool, like that's the maximum you can do, and it only hits 750 watts on the AC loads. It's pretty bloody good if you ask me. So it was pulling 50, 54 amps or something a minute ago. So if I'm running this, and I have been, we've been running it for like since nine o'clock this morning, and well, it's 71%. So the time right now, it's something like just after lunch. So it's actually two o'clock. <laughs> so I've got a clock right there. So I've been running this for like, you know, four or five hours. It's only used 30%, guys. Heck was that? We've had, we've got no solar production in here. So I don't know if you saw the drone shot earlier. It is, I've got a massive oak tree here covering three quarters, 80% of the panel. So there is no, so I'm getting 70 watts, all right? Like, and we only just connected the solar about an hour ago. So I've had no solar production, guys, and I've only used, well, if you want to, 30%, but if you want to know what we've used in amp hours, we have used, so you go to Windsor Battery, and we've used 160. So it's, this air conditioner has only used 160 amp hours since just past nine o'clock this morning. It's two o'clock now. That's pretty good if you ask me. Not bad for an old roof clunker or floor clunker, old type of air conditioner. So we're running here, it's nice and cold in here. This is good. With the uh, Victron setup, as you know from the other videos, as I've always said, you can run the microwave at the same time and you can run other items as well. You are not limited with this setup. It really, really does help your factory system. Um, now old mate, they're, they're about to do some serious touring in this, hence the big upgrade. And he's got a Honda, a brand new Honda 2.2 generator. So because he's got it available, I told our mate to get it out and plug it in so I can actually show, show him how to set this up so you can pull whatever you want out of the, the inverter, um, uh, out of the generator. So, uh, you know, 2.2, I'd probably set that at say nine amps or even eight amps as an example, which is about 1850 or 1800 watts or so. So what that means is when I set this current limit here, to eight amps, it's only going to pull, you know, eight amps from the generator at a maximum. Now, if you exceed that, i.e. put the microwave on and, and a kettle at the same time, and it needs more than that, you know, eight amps, it will use battery power on top of that. So if it's pulling 1800 watts from the generator and you turn it all on, that load will go over the 1800. It won't make the generator clip off, all right? 
it will use battery power on top of your generator to supplement what you're drawing. I mean, it's it's a no-brainer, perfect system. Every time this works wickedly. You know, I keep saying to people, if you're on a 10 amp power supply, like old mate is at this house here, or if you go to a farm stay and there's a big shed, you know, with a 10 amp power outlet, and you've got to get your little, you know, 10 amp to 15 amp uh, amphibian converter, well, that limits you to 2,400 watts. So, you know, if you were running your microwave and you got your air conditioner on, you're on the limit. Anything else is just going to make it go click all the time, and it's it's pretty annoying to go and always flick that switch off. Not with this system. It will not work like that. You set on this what you want the most to be pulled out of that line. So I'd set it for 9.5 or 10 amps. That, that way it'll hit 10, and that's it. That's the limit. When you want more, it's going to come from the batteries. It's, it's a really, really awesome system. I really, really love Victron how they do that. And it's all done on the touch screen up here, guys. So yeah, I can't fault this system. Yeah, we've re rewired it and I'll show you guys videos. This has what the old, what's called the old factory um, single 12 volt circuit. And the way that that works is power would come in through pin two and power would come in through a power supply. So two 12 volt feeds would come in to a master switch and then it would get, then it would get put out to a common output so you know you'd have to switch over this position for you know when you're driving to get battery power so your fridge could stay cold and your lights would work and then when you were rocked up at your mains powered site you'd flick the switch over to that position so then obviously when you plugged in power things would come on anyway we'll go back to battery so we've rewired it so it's only one power source now it is only 12 volt lithium battery so when he leaves this switch in this position, it's a master switch for on, that's all of his 12 volt circuits that was uh, were existing. And then when he turns it off, that's off. That's his master switch completely off. This here runs independently, although this will monitor the 12 volt usage. This here mainly controls the inverter. You can see your solar production, you can see what's left in your battery. Uh, you know, you go to your main screen here. So right now, I'll go through the numbers. We're charging at 1.3 amps at the moment. If I was to put this on, that would go into minus. Obviously, yeah, so there it is, minus 1.6, you know. So I've got a couple of fluoros on and some LED lights and you know, a little halogen light at the rear. So all of the system is monitored. The fridge is monitored, the microwave, the solar production, the air conditioner, anything that goes in and out of these batteries, guys, is completely monitored and is dead eye accurate. Right here in front of you, no smoke and mirrors. It says 71%. I've got 71% of my battery left before it's at zero. It's so easy to read and understand. And all of these little you know, things moving around tell you where the power's coming from, where the power's going. It's so easy to read and understand. And once you've got the Touch 50 or the Touch 70, you guys will realize that too. And being touchscreen, everything is right here. If I want to change a setting, if I want to turn something on or off, it's all here very easy to use so just to recap guys 560 amp hours in lithium we've got 900 watts of thin film roof solar on this we've got the victron 50 smart solar controller got the orion 30 dc to dc charger for vehicle charging we've got the victron multi plus 12 3000 120 model 2 running on everything for the microwave air conditioner as you can hear and the full works and caboodle here swapped out to an angle fridge from the old three-way, so no more running different power sources. And he's, uh, you know, it's a 12 volt compressor fridge, so that's gonna work perfectly everywhere he goes. There you have it, guys. Full off-grid setup in an older van. Okay, guys, so you know how we do this. Once again, I've got the air conditioner running. So this is a Heron 2.2, the old Air Command air conditioner. This is a 96 model van, guys, all right? So it's quite an old AC. What did I say? Just over 700 watts, there it is. That's running on flat out, pretty darn good. There you go, she's clipped off. This should drop back now. Beautiful. So that's, it's clunking in, clunking out. That's the uh, compressor cutting in and cutting out, guys. Dropping back to a low idle now. You can hear the fan running. So obviously that AC load of 60 odd watts is just the fan running. And what I'm going to do is I will wait for that compressor to kick in and we will crank the microwave up, all right? There's the power ratings, guys. So this is the old air command, like I said. Take note of the input on cooling. So there you go, That's, that'll explain the numbers. Well, there you go. 
She kicked in. Now I can finish my video. <laughs> All right, what are we running at? See that initial initial load? That big clunk on? So that'll settle in a second. Let's see what she pulls. Let it run. So she's settling down now. There we go. It's about seven, 750 odd watts. All right, so we'll go to the microwave, yeah? Yes. Daddy shark full of water. Um, we'll go instant cook. All right, cool bananas. Back up to the screen for you guys. Pretty standard stuff there, people. The power pool battery is absolutely loving this discharge. Yeah, you know, the standard 12 volt lights don't even flicker in here with that load. It's brilliant. Don't even move. So running the Heron 2.2 and the microwave simultaneously. All right, cool. I'll shut this down and we'll go for um, we'll find a toaster or a kettle or something. All right, old mate, set me up. Kettle full of water, toaster, no toast, but we can still turn it on. And we've got microwave kicking down here. This has kicked in, so that's the air conditioner running. Right, let's put a uh, kettle on. So, massive two, 200 bit thousand watt kettle and the air conditioner running at the same time. Let's put the toaster on. Toaster is on. What was that jacked it up to? Those power pull batteries. How good is this, guys? Look at that beautiful number. Thank you, Paul. Power pool batteries, guys. This is a really off-grid setup. I'm running that kettle. You can hear it. The air conditioner's running, and I've got the toaster cranking. All right. Look at this. This is off-grid living with power to go. Getting bugger all solar, obviously. You can see the oak tree in front of us, and running the Heron 2.2. Nice cold air coming to that one. Swing it back around again. Oh, there's my toast ready. Toast is kicked off. Maybe we should put the microwave at the same time. We'll go one minute. Start. So that one there. That's a big one for you. What was that kick it up to? Oh, the air conditioner turned off. Either way, hey, nothing's turned off, guys. This is. This is unbelievable. This is so good. So I just made my toast. Got the got the kettle boiling in the way there. Got my mug in there that's going off. Got the air conditioner running all at the same time. Just really pulling some big power from these batteries and they handle it day in, day out. This is how to do it. It would be really good if we were in full sun here. We could see that 900 watts coming in to supplement and fill this battery bank up really quick. But uh, we'll just do all these discharged tests for you guys and we'll do that and see what we uh, we can get this down to. And because we're getting down to these lower levels, um, not that it's low on a lithium battery. Ooh, there's my mug of hot water ready. Um, I can do this all the time, as many times as I want. Really, really happy with this setup. I'm, I'm so glad I got to do an older van with the old Heron 2.2 because now people that want to have these setups in their older vans, you know, that don't want to spend massive, massive amounts of money on a new van, you know, they're happy with their van, they've set it up the way they want, or it's got, um, you know, it's got a bit of history with the family. Get yourself set up. You know, this is, this is making it work off grid on the side of the road, anywhere you go, guys. Like I said, run your air conditioner while you're driving. You've got all the solar coming in. You've got your DC to DC charger from the vehicle pumping power in. If you do it right, you'll have full batteries and a cold van when you arrive at camp. Cool. So a rundown on the setup here as uh, discussed before. So there's your power pool batteries there, guys. 280 amp hours each, 250 amp continuous discharge. So both them combined there. And there was nothing in this area before, so this is all done now. And even though I'm making fit his generator here, so there's still enough space from there. So we've got the 
got the Iran, um, sorry, there's the Orion 30 amp DC to DC charger there, taking care of vehicle charge. We've got a full on 6 BS cable, nice and thick for him to work and get zero voltage drop over. We've got the MPPT 150 taking care of the 900 watts on his roof there, so it's going to hit the limit on that pretty quick. Awesome setup, really there, really good there. So we've got the um, inverter charger there. That's going to pump in 120 if required. And we've just added a 12 volt circuit here so you can add stuff later on and we've rewired existing stuff there. And it's all labeled, easy to read and you know, it's all neatly done. There we go. Okay, so the first charging test we'll do is running the generator. Now I don't have mains power here. I'm not gonna bother about running the mains power. And we'll just, we'll just run the generator guys. So I've got a Honda 2.2 running at the moment. And what can we do? Let's go to, right, so AC mode is on. So it's working in, in the on mode. Now we'll, we'll set this. Now, remember what I said about the inverter, um, the multi plus, how you can set the current input limit. So the most right now it's set for is five amps. What that means is it's only gonna pull and use up to 1200 watts maximum from the generator. So that's great for little small generators that don't, don't have big output. But I know on this one, I can take it right up to about I think we'll try eight. So now it's gonna to start to pull more power from the input. So take note of, and that's only if it's required. See how it's increasing? Okay, see the grid, how it's increasing? So now I've set it for, I think it should be like 1800 or something. So now the most it's gonna pull from that input is eight amps, right? If required. which right now, because the battery charger is going to be kicking in, which it is, it's doing it. But take note, now I've got the mains charger set, guys, to 120. Now, the reason we're not seeing that number here at the moment is because I'm running AC loads on top of it. So what it's doing, there's a, uh, there's a, um, a setting that you can do, it's called dynamic current limiter, all right? What that means is it will work out where the power energy where the, where the power is required, most importantly, and it'll go to that. And in this case, it's the AC loads, running the air conditioner. And if I was to shut the air conditioner down, that charge rate would fly up, all right? It would absolutely go rocketing. So let's do that. Shut this down, it should be quick and simple on this one. Okay. That should be off. Oh, that fan's a bit orange, anyway. Now take note of the current. What's she flown up to, guys? Look at that. So you see how it works. So when you set it up with that dynamic current limiter, the generator, the gen set, the mains power, it will work out what's required, and it, the, the multi will actually send the power where it's required. And in this, in its its case, is the outputs, so the AC loads. And you can see it there. So now the all the power is going straight into the batteries bugger all going to the AC loads, that whole 120 if it was possible. Mate, I'll try and crank it a bit more. I'm pretty sure it might clip off, but we'll, we'll try a nine. Maybe a bit more, we'll go 10, yeah? So 2,400 watts, except 10. Right, cool. Let's see if we get a change. There you go. I reckon we've hit the limit, guys, and I think we have because I've set that for 10 amps, which is you know two and a half thousand watts. So there we have it. That is the generator, a Honda 2.2 charging these batteries at that power. It's all going into the batteries. Now I'll, I'll put it in reverse now. I'm gonna put the air conditioner on, all right? So I just turned it off and you saw how the charge rate went up there, okay? So the power went straight from the grid, or the generator, straight into the battery. So I'm gonna turn this air conditioner back on, guys, all right? So we'll go. Now, take note, you see what happened? A generator would have turned off or did it just back down? 
No, she stayed on. Because I've got that set for 10 guys, that's 2,400 watts. That's, a, that's actually over what the Honda, the Honda generator can do. Let's see if we can get it to clip off. Take note of the charge rate. See how it's dropped? So the Honda generator, uh, sorry, the MultiPlus is prioritizing where the power should be going. So it's backed off the charge and it's running the air conditioner now. Now she's really loaded up, okay? You can hear it, I don't know if you can hear it, I can hear it. She's really loaded up. But if you want to take less load on the generator, guys, because you're not interested in, you know, fast charging, well, it's, it's so simple. All you got to do is go like this. Let's say I don't want to pull, you know, two and a half thousand watts from the, from the generator. Well, let's go down to, we've got a half that, so we go accept. You know, if you heard that, there you go. So now instantly my fuel usage has gone down by a lot because I'm not loading the generator up. And there we go. I'm still charging the batteries, albeit not at a massive amount. But when that air conditioner, guys, when that air conditioner kicks out and is not, you know, pulling out all that power, the power will go straight into the batteries and that number will increase. All without touching anything. It's completely automatic. That's almost gone down to a low idle now. And it has. Now watch what the multi does. Look at the charge rate. Now that air conditioner is turned off. You heard it. Take note of the AC loads, guys. So the air conditioner's um, compressor is not running. But look at where all the power's going now. See? So it, it, it's all going there now. It's very smart. It, it just knows what to do.